Hey guys, welcome to a formerly Patreon exclusive episode. This is a Patreon unlocked episode. Uh, Patreon voted to unlock this episode for YouTube so that everyone could see it. So thanks to Patreon. Uh, if you want to support Serial at Midnight, uh, please subscribe, please give thumbs ups, please comment on these videos, share them, and you can also join Patreon. There are over 150 videos like the one you're about to watch on Patreon. Uh, and it's such a wonderful community and there's a lot of benefits that come with that. So I want to thank Patreon again. Uh, there's some interesting, this video is from about a year ago as, as you're watching it. And there are some of the, some of the topics are, um, of their time, but I think the overall conversation about FOMO, about buying things because of a fear of missing out is more relevant now than it was when this video was first recorded a year ago. You tell me what you think and we'll continue the conversation in the comments below. Heath from the past, take it away. Guys, what's going on? Hello, howdy, howdy, hey, hey. Welcome to another Patreon exclusive episode just for you, the Patreon supporter. Uh, in a previous Patreon video, when I was talking about recovering from being sick at the end of June, I asked for some topic suggestions for Patreon exclusive episodes, just like 10 minute short topics uh, that we could just kind of talk about and I could tell you what I think and you can give me your feedback on them. Um, and so please continue to do that. I would like, you know, for just from now on, I would like to be doing uh, topical videos for you guys that you want to see. So let me know, send in your topics and we'll tackle them here. But Mike, uh, had a great topic, which was essentially the question is what releases, what movie releases, uh, disc releases do I feel compelled to buy right now? Because I think that now is the time. And if I wait, I will miss out forever. Um, a good example would be the Friday the 13th set from Shout Factory, which I actually begrudgingly bought because I, I, just, I, I knew when I bought it, watch my review. It's half like it's mostly commentary on how I know that they're going to put these movies out again. And guess what? Those movies are coming out again. They're coming out on 4K now. They, they were 4K masters, right? I was like, well, we have all these movies with new 4K masters, but there's no 4Ks in here. They could have given us the 4Ks, given us the option of the 4Ks. I was like, so this is not my last Friday the 13th purchase, right? I'll be buying these again. So I was less excited about it. But fortunately, like it was all those movies in one box set, which is the point here is multiple studios, product for multiple studios in one package. Uh, the Halloween box set that, you know, I'm thankful to have that too. Though I don't watch the later Halloween movies very often. Every once in a blue moon. Um, but that the point is, what are you afraid is going to go away? So you got to buy it now or you're going to miss out on it forever. This really resonated with me because FOMO is such a big part of the marketing in how we buy things. Not just movies, music, comics, everything. We're, we're being bombarded by FOMO, fear of missing out from like every company, corporation, like everything. It's, it's, it's how they're selling stuff to us. And um, I recognize that in my own buying habits and I'm trying, I'm constantly at war with myself about this. I'm trying not to be a slave to my fearful instincts. I don't always win. Um, sometimes the instincts went out, but I'm constantly, you know, like I, I, I've gone digital with my comics now, right? I buy my comics digitally. Comixology has these sales, these really great sales. Yes, I, I realize I don't own the comics. Well, I with IDW and Dynamite and some of those companies, you can actually download them to your hard drive and they're DRM free. But uh, with Marvel and DC, I realize I don't own those. That's a whole other topic. I'm okay with that for what I'm paying, which is pennies on the dollar. Um, but they'll have these sales and I'm like, well, the sale ends. Like at Christmas time, Marvel Masterworks were like $1.89. Some of them were 99 cents digital Marvel masterworks. So I FOMO buy because I know that that sale may not come around again. If it does, it's going to be like a year music. I did a lot of buy a lot of music. I buy as much music as I buy movies and talk about, or I love music as much as I love movies. The box sets for these things, they're like, they'll come and go. They don't tell you how many units there are. And you just wake up one day with something on your wish list is gone. Maybe it's coming back. Happened to me just last week with the Paul Butterfield Blues Band, there was this big box set of Paul Butterfield Blues Band that I've been wanting for like two years. It went out of print. And then it came back in print. Uh, I guess they pressed a few more. So I bought it and it's out of print again. Like you can't find it anywhere. So I was like, phew. So it works. The FOMO thing is real. Um, but I'm trying my best not to, not to fall victim to that because it's not... It, it rarely... Like so many movies that I thought I was buying because they were about to go away forever... They're everywhere. They're still 
like the Vincent Price box sets from uh, Shout Factory. Uh, yeah, Shout Factory. You can't get the box set. Well, they put some. They did repress some of the box sets with a better version of one of those movies. Um, but the ones that they've lost, like Kino Lorber has stepped up and they've been like, well, here's that movie with a new 4K scan or, you know, something like that. Um, so I no longer really fear missing out on a lot of this stuff. Um, like if the Friday the 13th movie box set hadn't happened, I, I was fine. Like I had the first eight movies on Blu-ray and I had the, the other movies on DVD and I was fine with that. I mean, I really was because I don't watch was Jason Goes to Hell and Jason X. <laughs> you know, those are not frequent watches. Um, but, I mean, it, it's nice to have this. But if, they, if someone had put those out on Blu-ray, I would have been perfectly fine not having them in the same case. So I don't... I, I wasn't super worried about that. What gets me is these Shell Factory limited editions, that the, the site-exclusive 1,500 units limited editions. I can't stand that because I know that they have the capacity to sell more than that on a wider platform. They have chosen site exclusives to avoid distribution. Essentially, they're a distributor who's avoiding distribution. And I know why. I know why. I mean, I know how this stuff works. I talked about it. I know, I know why they're doing this. They're doing it to raise demand and make some quick money and they're avoiding you, you send your stuff to Amazon, you send your stuff to Target, you've now, there's a whole cost associated with that, right? It costs, uh, what Eric Wilkinson from MVD Entertainment told us in a video um, that he was like, well, you know, the reason that some of this stuff, he's like, if you want to have five copies of something in a Walmart, how many Walmarts are there in the country? And then how are you going to get them there? You got to factor in the production costs, you got to factor in the shipping costs. But I wish that Shout Factory would move, if they want to keep these costs lower and also sell things in their catalog that they own or that they have deals with for the AIP catalog, which is, that's MGM for most of it. Um, I wish that they would move to a manufactured on demand model. Even, we know they can do it, even if they're pressing this stuff, because they'll say the Doctor Strange movie, like, of course I bought it. The, the, not the, Mar the 70s TV movie for Doctor Strange. Um, with the mom from Arrested Development in it, right? Uh, they printed, to tie into the Doctor Strange movie, they pressed 1,500 units of this obscure Marvel TV movie that it's pretty cool, and I'm really happy that they did, and I'm happy that I bought it. Um, but it sold like that. Because, of course, it's a Marvel movie, and it's tied into something people were already excited. It's tied into a Sam Raimi movie. 1500 units gone like you know faster than you can say uh by the eye of agamotto right and the people like within three days people are like it's gone we didn't even know about it until like last night you know there's people you know like i was eating my dinner and i didn't even see this um and so they're like okay we hear you 500 more and then those are gone too you know they sell out so quick too so uh, i think they've sold out somebody check on that i think they've they'll sold out too had they done a an MOD model and distributed through Amazon, or even if they just distributed through themselves, pressed them in 100-unit batches, 500-unit batches, whatever. Now, I know it costs a lot of money to press things. Uh, you got to get in line. You got to wait. That's why the, the, it bothers me because they don't have to do that. And if more people knew about them, if more people, if there was not a time limit on this, this is why I get frustrated about this. Because every single time I talk about these movies, I, I put my money down, I buy them. I'm usually, they're never great movies. If they were great movies, they'd be at Best Buy. They'd be at Walmart. They'd be on Amazon. They they do put their big sellers on, well, frequently Shout Factory is just becoming like the John Carpenter repress studio or like whatever is... Yeah, I'm going to stick with that statement. Like they are interested in keeping things in print that they know is going they're going to sell, you know, 20,000 copies or something. I under, it's business, I understand. But invariably, I'm going to talk about these movies and I'm going to get bombarded by people saying I would have bought it if I had seen if if I could have bought. There I, weirdly I get a lot of people that watch the channel that don't want to shop by mail, which is like counterproductive to me because it's all gone online and if you don't want to shop online like you're just going to have to make peace with the fact that you're going to miss out on a lot of stuff but but that brings us full circle because we're talking about missing out on stuff um i'm trying to be better about it i don't but see i'm in kind of a privileged position too because i'm reviewing so much stuff from the new studios as this stuff i'm new stuff for the studios 
Um, but like a lot of the limited editions that I get to talk about, like I, I'm so happy that I get to do that. It, it's great for me. It's great for the channel. But if I was spending my own dollars on these things, there's a lot of it I would not buy. I would just wait till the standard edition comes out. I don't need posters of every movie that comes out. I don't, you know, there's some of these movies that are just like, oh, I like that movie okay. Movies that I love, you know, that's a different story. Like I, I consistently talk about this, like the Arrow, um, the Cold War Creatures box set. That is an amazing box set. I'm so happy that I have the limited edition for that. But then, like, they do uh, Eric's Phantom of the Mall, Eric's Revenge. I, I Like, it would have been nice to have that limited edition, um, but I have the standard edition, and I'm okay with that. I don't need tons and tons of Eric's. They're like, oh, there's like a fourth, or maybe it was even a fifth. I think it's the fourth cut hidden on the the uh, limited edition version of that. And I'm like, I'm probably not going to watch the theatrical cut for another five years. So I don't need multiple cuts of that movie. But for the people that are really hardcore on the Phantom of the Mall, Eric's Revenge, I get you want to have as many cuts as possible. You don't want to miss out. And they know that you don't want to miss out. But I'm getting better in my older age about navigating this stuff. But it still gets me sometimes. I have my pitfalls. Like when I was talking about music and Shout Factory continues. Though I complain, I consistently support those limited edition releases. I only buy one. I don't buy five and put four of them on eBay. I buy one. Um, that's another thing that bothers me is they let people buy five. Like limit it to two maybe, you know, so more people have an opportunity to get those. Um, which is what they did when the Doctor Strange got repressed. I think they limited it to two two or three which is still more than they should be letting people buy at one time but i you know old man yells at clouds um so i i don't know i'm getting better about it but this is a consistent struggle that i think so many of us face is like i don't want to miss out it's the thrill man i mean why does the a team do it for the jazz man i they get us with the jazz like we love the jazz of that it's the thrill of a hunt it's the idea of of getting something you know that you weren't sure you're were, you were going to be able to get they got our number <laughs> and that's okay. Uh, so it's, it's, it's fun, which is why we're here and we're talking about it. So I know that's where I'm coming from. Um, not loving the buying things out of fear, but I do it. And I know a lot of you guys do it too. So we can continue the conversation in the comments below. I'm tr hopefully I come across as super non non-judgmental in this. Cause really I like whatever you guys want to do. Um, I tend to, that's another thing. Like I do get upset about certain things, but they're like things that bother me and I don't, I try not to tell other people how to live their life or what they should be buying. People even say, they're like, hey, you covered this imprint release on so-and-so. Should I buy this? I'm like, if you want it, I, it doesn't matter to me one way or the other. You know, do what works for you. Do what makes you happy and don't buy something out of FOMO. Even those imprint releases, you might miss the slip cover, but the movies, they bring the movies back in print. And guess what? They're like five bucks cheaper when they come back in print without the slip cover. The slip covers are nice. They look really good on the shelf, but... The movie is ultimately the thing that matters to me, the product itself, um, which I guess is why I've gone digital with some of my comics and stuff. But that's the topic. That is a tale for another time. The Conan, fan back, pull back on the throne of Conan. And then we'll Marvel losing Conan, fear of missing out on Conan. Talk about it in the comments below. All right, guys, thank you so much. Take care. Thank you so much for your Patreon supporters. As I'm about to leave my Patreon supporters. Uh, this just ended in a, in a messy, <laughs> a messy, sloppy. Heath couldn't really end that one. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Take care. I'll catch you later.